click on camera number two. Hi there, I'm just trying to do this so it comes up with a good entrance card for the video. Got to stop looking at the safety camera, I'll only keep looking at the main camera. Hi, I'm Paul Murphy, <clears throat> as I'm sure you know, <laughs> if through nothing else but the start of the uh, YouTube thing will say. <clears throat> okay, I need to get into funny mode. Okay, I'm going to do Norway today, and then we're going to talk at the end of this, okay? So I'll try and get some jokes out before we get all serious. Norway is one of my favourite bits from my own books, okay? So, Norway. Yung, 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 yung. Norway is a sovereign state and unitary monarchy whose territory comprises the western portions of the Scandinavian peninsula plus the remote island of Jan Mayen and the archipelago of Svalbard. The Antarctic Peter of the First Island and the sub-Antarctic Bouvet Island are dependent territories and thus not considered part of the kingdom, <laughs> nor is Peru, although they're still tiny. Norway also lays claim to a section of Antarctica known as Queen Maudland and a section of my CD collection known as Queen's Greatest Hits. <laughs> Until 1814, the kingdom included the Faroe Islands, Greenland and Iceland. It also included Bohusian until 1658, Jamlat and Harjunen until 1645. Ah, uh, you got to wait a long time for a joke in this chapter. I'm so sorry, guys. Shetland and Orkney until 1468, the Hebrides and Isle of Man until 1266, the Isle of Be Damned, oh, there's a joke, <laughs> I'm going so fast I miss the jokes, until 1554, East Tooting until 1676, and Mrs. Beryl Undies until last Wednesday, when she launched an uprising and gained independence and a seat at the United Nations. If I hadn't interrupted myself, I'd have just ploughed on and found the jokes, wouldn't I? Been a long time since I read this. Norway has appeared in many popular songs. Leonard Cohen, hey, that's Norway to say goodbye. Gosh, these are some twisted puns. Bob Marley, Norway man no cry. The Foo Fighters, Norway back. Frank Sinatra, Norway. And now the ice is near. My fjord, I'll say it clear. And Frank Zappa, Broadway the Norway. <laughs> Actually, the, the original Frank Zappa title was even ruder, but anyway. From the 8th to the 10th century, the wider Scandinavian region was the source of Vikings. There was a quick spreading outbreak and they got everywhere. Mrs. Ethel read the book. <laughs> Ethel read the book. Mm. Officer, shall I do it in my chrome voice? I don't know if I can make it all the way through with the voices. For the reasons you'll find out at the end of this. Officer! <laughs> I certainly can't do it in a Norwegian accent. Officer, I've got the Vikings. Let's try this. Officer, I've got the Vikings again. Constable Plodger. Oh dear, where about to, madam? Well, I opened up the fridge to get myself a cheese sandwich this morning and there was one right there. In the fridge? No, in my cheese sandwich. <laughs> oh dear, again, what happened? Oh, I wasn't having it. And that upset him. Shoo, I said to him, get out of my sandwich now, you naughty viking. And off he ran. So, no harm done then? Not really. Apart from the killing of my husband and an incident with a goat that will put him in therapy for years. Oh dear, once more. Sir, anything else? Yes, I found four more in my cabbage patch, two in my loft and one up my drain pipe. Is that a euphemism? No, it's a pipe connecting the drain to the gutter. I see. And how many times have you suffered from the Vikings now? Oh, this must be about the tenth time. It's worse in winter. I gets the chill blains and then the Vikings. It's no good at my age. And what is that? It's a chronological record of my existence. Uh, well, I'll look into it, madam, and see what can be done. I keep putting down poison, but they don't eat it. Oh, they're whaley bladers, those Vikings. It's the noise as well. All that pillaging and looting, I can't get any sleep. It's a common problem these days, I'm afraid. My mate Mabel from the other village, she had the Vikings last year and she had to move house. Because of the noise? No, because they burnt us down. <laughs> there can be such a pest. I've written to my MP, but he was no use. Too busy, too dead. Any excuse, these politicians. <laughs> I did buy one of those Vikings. <laughs> I did buy one. <laughs> I did buy one of those Viking traps that heard your screw cells in line. Don't you mean online? No, I had to stand in the line to buy one. Was it any good? 
Nothing special as lines go. <laughs> no, 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 not the line, madam. The Viking trap. Was it any good? Sort of. I caught one in it, but I'm too much of a softy. I let it go. Flush it down the toilet, my old man said. But he looked so cute, I released him and let him run through. Don't you mean run free? No, he run me husband through with a sword. There's gratitude, I said to him, as he gurgled up blood and died. I'm sorry for your loss. Me too. It was his turn to do the dishes. <laughs> oh well, I think I've got all I need. Do you think you'll be able to do anything to help me? Oh, good Odin, no, that's not what the police are for. What are you for? I'm for early retirement on double final salary. You do know I'm white and upper middle class, don't you? I'm so sorry, madam. I will get the full resources of the law at your disposal right now. Are you being politically satirical? It's a fair cop. No, the FA cop is silver. <laughs> the losing of the money. <laughs> that's one of my favourite bits, that is. The looting of the monastery at Lindisfarne in North East England on June the 8th, 1793 by Norse people has long been regarded as the event which marked the beginning of the Viking Age, although some say it was the commensurate tattooing of This is the Beginning of the Viking Age on the arse of Queen Eadbreth that was the source of it. <laughs> Shall I do some more here? I'm watching my time into this, aren't I? Okay. Uh, the sea was the easiest way of communication between the Norwegian kingdoms and the outside world. Although unless you uh, had a good signal, it took ages to send an email by the wave. <laughs> the North Sea rovers were traders, colonisers, explorers and plunderers. Still one up on today's lawyers. <laughs> there is ongoing debate among the scholars as to why the Scandinavians began to expand from the 8th through the 11th centuries. Oh, gold, this bit goes on a bit. Oh, no, I've got into Frank Albert. Oh, no, Mrs. Oh, gold, don't it ever go on? Oh, well, I've always been a long stay. Oh, so sorry. Where was I? <laughs> uh, Scandinavians began to expand from the 8th through the 11th centuries. Let's go, old John Gilgit on it. Demographic model, dear boy. Let's do it straight. The model, this model suggests that Scandinavia experienced a population boom just before the Viking Age began. Many Scandinavians found themselves with no property and no status. An inscription on a Viking IOU translates as, I haven't got a pot to piss in. Under which someone has added, that was no excuse to piss in mine, especially as I was drinking from it at the time. <laughs> to remedy this, these landless men took to piracy to obtain material wealth. Second, the economic model. The economic model states that the Viking Age was the result of growing urbanism and trade throughout mainland Europe. The connection of the Scandinavians to larger and richer trade networks lured the Vikings into Western Europe, and credit rock fraud became easy at the time, as most English people carried a rock with their pin numbers carved on it, which the Vikings stole and cloned by carving a matching rock. <laughs> yeah. Ideological model. The start of the Viking Age also coincided with Charlemagne's Saxon Wars, or assorted wars with pagans in Saxony. Historians Rudolf Simic and Bruno Dumasil theorise that the Viking attacks may have been in response to the spread of Christianity among pagan peoples, although Otto Toot, <laughs> historian of the Cleethorpes Museum of Modern Nostalgia, theorises that they just like walloping people. Once again, I'm going to do an aside here. Right, YouTube, YouTube, you have an automatic subtitle thing that brings up subtitles. I don't do it, folks. I left up the video the next thing I know two days later. It's all there in subtitles. It's a clever... The word is Cleethorpes. Cleethorpes. C-L-E-E-T-H-O-R-P-E-S. Cleethorpes. I have seen that spelled a zillion ways. Can you really have a dyslexic algorithm? I don't know. I just guess go about called algorithm. <clears throat> no, I didn't. Unlikely model. <laughs> Professor Hector Twat <laughs> of the University of Cheese in Lyme Regis posits that the Viking Age <laughs> began because the price of cheese in Norway had reached such a level of maturity, translation Pong, in the summer of 793 that hundreds of Norwegians jumped on boats and fled to the nearest land they could find that had no rennet. Landing in Lindisfarne, they felt safe and went to greet the populace in peace. But unfortunately, it was the day of the great Lindisfarne Cheese Festival, when all of the monks dressed up as their favourite coagula coagulated man, coagulated milk, 
walking up the beach and being greeted by 65 giant assorted cheeses was almost too much for the Vikings. The tipping point coming when the head friar said in jest, good away, welcome to our cathedral city. We don't stilt on ceremony here, please be welcome and have a paneer, pan here is the play on words, from ages, from ages, clever huh, <laughs> ago, please sit carefully and we will irk. NB. Irk is not a cheese, but the sound of a friar being murdered by having 48 kilos of Wensleydale shoved up his arse. <laughs> Driven into a cheese yule of fury, the Vikings attacked at random, since dawn was already taken. <laughs> and uttered their battle cry, Hogas Tog Queen Cheddar! Death before Cheddar! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. That one book's better on pages, I'm sure you figured out. Monk, uh, we'd rather you chose death. Viking, er, well, we kind of mean your death, not ours. Monk. Oh, um, any chance we could debate this over supper? Hmm. Well, it's not an unreasonable request. Yes. Why not? What is for supper? Fried camembert. You just don't help yourselves, do you? <laughs> oh, OK, what have I got here? Uh, just a little bit more. Iona. The Inner Hebridean island of Iona had its monastery raided three times by Vikings in the years 794, 802 and 806. Beginning in the year 807, the monastery was moved about 20 miles inland for safety, whereupon it was invaded by the people who had <laughs> been moved on to. The monastery was then moved 15 miles south, where it caught a bus to the east coast, had a two-week holiday, and then hitchhiked to the north coast, where it was invaded by a swarm of beavers, who dressed as Vikings just to rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> Amlaib Croan, who is king of Northumbria and Dublin, uh, and his fridge, <laughs> retired to the monastery on Iona, what, in 980, where he died soon afterwards of travel sickness. <laughs> There's not much in the way of home comforts here, is there, he asked the head friar upon entering the monastery. Whose fault is that, you thieving Viking bastard, was the restrained reply. Despite his high position and reputation, following Koran's death, the island was still sacked twice by his successors on Christmas night 986, when the Vikings dressed as beavers, just to rub it in, and again in 987, when they stormed the gates yelling, put us on the naughty list, would ya? Eventually, the island Viona threw in the towel, changed its name to Herb, and travelled the world as a mime artist, meeting a terrible end in 1208, when it caught fire and there was nobody around to see it signals for help. <laughs> okay, that's a bit of the Norway book there. Right, I've overrun the time I was going to do this for. Right, hi folks, my name is Paul Murphy and, um, and I'm speaking to you today and I think it's the 26th of January 2022. I think it's that day because it is that day. Um, I'm trying to stick some YouTube videos up here of um, books I write, or I have written in the last year, comedy books, some factual music books, books of lyrics from my songs, plus books of poems, and a whole series of children's books dedicated to my wonderful children, Dylan and Emily, who I love with all my heart. The reason I'm doing this, and doing these videos, which I hope have afforded you some amusement, although since they're free, there's not much affording about it, <laughs> is because um, if you're in England, you know what NHS discharge papers look like. And here's where all the laughs go for a little bit. <clears throat> it's because... Dun, 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 dun. This is uh, from the 4th of October 2021. <sighs> Patient name Murphy Paul, date of birth 10th of June 1961. No point in me lying about me age any longer. <laughs> and uh, diagnosis. Progressive bulba palsy motor neurone disease. 11th month history of progressive muscular weakness, hoarsening of voice. Over the last couple of months, the weakness has become so bad he's unable to stand up sometimes. Muscle wasting, so severe. Da -da -da -da. <sighs> so, in a nutshell, I'm dying of a really, really nasty, insidious, garbage crap disease that is incurable, and if they invented a cure today, it's too late for me. Uh, my this is a shirt that I was wearing five years ago, I've lost. And what you don't see on these videos is that I'm, although it looks as though I'm mobile and around, I'm actually propped up on, if I move back, I'm propped up on a walking frame and just out of sock there on my crutches. 
Not so funny anymore, is it, guys? So, um, so I, uh, in the last 11 months, I've put together something like about 20 books um, that are out there. I don't know if YouTube allow me to advertise the website they're mainly on, but it begins with an A. I'm sure you can figure it out. And uh, my children are seven and nine as I do this. I have very little to uh, leave them because this disease came on so quickly and is so debilitating. Uh, I have uh, no living family as such, <clears throat> just my, my two young children. And um, who don't live with me, they're, um, uh, they're elsewhere with, a, with another parent. <laughs> I'm sure you can figure that out. Um, so I'm trying to leave behind something for them when they grow up which really would be the royalty of the books. Um, I spent about three months trying to sell off everything in the house that I could and, uh, and uh, all the assets, converting it to cash, A, to survive. Uh, you can't imagine what taxi fares are like. I live out in the wilds of the country and uh, a hospital appointment cost me £54 after 45 years of paying tax. I, uh, today, this very day, I won't get too ranty, but I was due to have my first social care visit today, since you can't see it, but uh, on the sofa there's a bed because I can't walk upstairs, you don't want to know about the toilet arrangements. Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, well I said, yeah, there's no cure because it's in my breathing now, so, you know, I have been told that I will just, you know, paralysis is imminent and then what will happen then, I'll just go to sleep one night and not wake up. Um, where was I going with this? Yeah, so I was due to have my first social care visit today, after 45 years as a taxpayer, folks. And uh, 25 minutes before it was due to start, they telephoned me, said, oh, we can't come today because beep beep, she's feeling a bit unwell. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, well, okay. There's a, three months ago you had a letter from my neurologist saying it's not fair that uh, all he can eat, well, uh, he can't eat anything because he can't open kin, tins and he's living off of milk and uh, other stuff. Anyway, let's not go down that route of um, slating off you know, the various organisations, you can't turn back the tide. So, folks, ah, so, because I don't know how many more of these videos I'll be able to make, so this is going to be, you know, so, some of that music, the poems, a Christmas carol, my take on um, Scrooge, his charitable enterprises such as Seeing Eye Wolverine, Seeing Eye Wolverines for the Blind, and uh, alligators <laughs> the anxious. <laughs> I kind of like this one. This is the Fables. This is a spoof of the um, Beatles. Um, if you're a Beatles fan, you know all about the Ruttles. Well, who isn't a Beatles fan, huh? Uh, and um, the Ruttles spoofed, of course, the Beatles' active years. I spoof the next ten years of, <laughs> of their life, dipping back into a little bit of um, their early... the, the breakup bits, you know, where John meets Nunu, you know, and the famous Japanese conceptual artist who is famous for cutting things in half. Is it art? Yes. Well, it sounds more like vandalism to me, John. Well, he's not called John, but uh, Jim. If I was you, I'd go to sleep on my stomach. You might wake up one morning and find you're not half the man you used to be, forget my drift. <laughs> What's this one here? Eric Wobble finds a time machine. This is a bloke called Eric, whose surname might be Wobble. Finds a time machine, goes back in time, meets Noah and Beethoven. I've done Beethoven on the videos there, it's a very funny chapter. Helena Troy, did she really have the face that launched a thousand ships? Yeah, yes. So she was a timeless beauty. Not really, no, we don't have champagne. They literally used a face to launch the ships. <laughs> very messy. <laughs> Jottings, this was just all bits of, I would just type stuff up to try and ward depression off and everything, you know. And uh, so I get up and I just, before my fingers seized up and I couldn't um, type and, uh, well, write anymore because I used to write them first. Uh, and so it's a book of lists and, da -da -da and stuff like that. What's this one here? Thousand and One Ways to Cook an Aardvark. Um, oh yeah, that is, uh, again, that's a book of um, short sketches. Uh, well, this is volume one of what I've just been reading you. Paul Murphy's Extremely Unlikely History of the Whole Volume R1. This goes A to Malta, somewhere around there, I guess. And um, there's a third volume, which is over there, and I'm not going to go get it, which just as the United Kingdom, which we're still united as I'm recording this. Um, this is called uh, um, Journeys, Poems, Looks and Reflections. There's a whole heap of others, including a series of um, children's books. So, the point being, 
If you could see your way fit, if you Google my name into YouTube or whatever it works out as YouTube my name into Google, whichever way you want to do it, hey, you know, we're liberal. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, if you go onto the website beginning with A, then you can, um, I think you can read the first 10 pages of each of the books for free and then see if you'd like to buy them. If you do, I'd be very grateful. If I've written any poetry that moves you, I'm, I'm, I'm glad about that. If uh, any of my jokes make you laugh, well, I'm glad about that. And uh, the children's books, the Emily and Bill books, um, you know, which seem to be going very well, uh, critically, if nothing else. Um, certainly a couple of the children's schools around here have taken them on to do it. And, uh, and then when I'm gone, what I will tell you is this, just as a, on a serious note, if you're in the UK, never go into a hospital or a GP surgery with one of those in your pocket and turned on. Okay, voice recorder. This pertains to be a document of an assessment that was done to me on the 21st of June last year. This is an audio recording by itself, same conversation, accidentally made. I always keep one of these because if I ever think of any jokes and I just turn it on, and you know, because in the old days you used to be out and around, you suddenly think of a joke, you know, hi, I'm Henry VIII, Judah, I certainly did. And uh, etc. You know, so <laughs> I've lost so many jokes through not being able to turn the thing on in time. There's something to distract your attention. You think I make up a lot of stuff? Well, <laughs> there's nothing so surreal as any of those things. So, in, in answer to the question, why I always have Scooby Doo on in the background when I'm recording is a good luck charm uh, for me. One final thing here, in the same way as I never leave home without toy, I never go anywhere without this perspective thing for my children, from without my son's friendship bracelet he gave me, and without a post it note. It's inside this envelope and just says, I love you, that my daughter gave me when she was three years old. And I've <clears throat> not left my purse in it since. Okay. And now, once again, I have to wheel myself over. I suppose there's no need to hide it now. The secret's out. I don't know when I'm going to upload this video, but when you see me coming forward and then turn these videos off, that's because I'm doing this. Because I'm pulling my walking frame behind me. Thank you for your time. I've been Paul Murphy, and you have been very patient. <laughs> Live long, hug your children every chance you get.